Great to be with you, Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, a common reason why you might come to see a cardiologist is because you've started feeling your heart racing, jumping around, missing beats, skipping beats, and it can make you feel quite anxious and worried. These symptoms, often called palpitations, are a very common reason why cardiologists get to see patients, and I want to go through one of the more common explanations for these palpitations called ectopic beats. Now, ectopic beats are essentially extra heart beats. Our heart normally beats between 60 and 80 beats per minute in the background, in silence, without causing us any bother. However, there are times where we might experience a heart actually beating, or we sense or we feel these extra heartbeats, a heart jumping around, and it can be quite a nerve-wracking experience. These symptoms can occur particularly in the evenings, or at night time when somebody's trying to get to sleep, and it can really cause a lot of stress and worry. Now, one of the more common reasons why these symptoms occur is as a result of these extra heartbeats or ectopic heartbeats. Now, to understand what these beats are, I want to go through a little about how our heart actually beats and the networking or wiring system of our heart, because that will give us a great idea as to where these extra beats actually arise. So if you jump onto our website, heartmatters.com, I'm really humbled by the great positive feedback that I've received about the website and the useful information relevant to heart health. But if you jump on to heartmatters.com, you'll see we have a dedicated HeartWorks page. And that really goes through how our heart actually functions, from the muscle itself, the valves, the arteries, and also the electrical system of our heart. Now, I want to show you here. This is a cross-section and an animation showing how our heart actually beats. The top chambers of the heart are called the atria, and the bottom chambers are called the ventricles. Now, there is a very intricate network of fibers, beginning with the sinus node. And I like to call the sinus node the power station of our heart. And that's where electricity arises, and the heart is stimulated to contract, and then electricity travels down through a series of other wires and cables down to cause the bottom parts of the heart to contract and to expel all the blood and oxygen to the rest of the body. Now here, as electricity spreads down, it goes through to a substation called the AV node or the atrioventricular node. And from there, conduction spreads down two major pathways. Now you might have heard these pathways termed bundles or bundle branches. And these are the bundles of fibers both in the left side of the heart and also the right side of the heart that are stimulated to contract, to make the heart beat. Now, you might have heard of things called bundle branch block, or you might have been diagnosed with a right bundle branch block or a left bundle branch block. And that's really affecting these set of wires in the bottom chambers of our heart. However, when we have these ectopic beats, these are extra heartbeats that arise from different locations. And I like to split them up into two main locations where these extra heartbeats arise. The first is in the top chambers of the heart called the atria, and the second are the ectopic beats that occur from the bottom chambers of our heart, the ventricles. Now, if we look again at the animation here, we can see that the heart, as I said, starts beating from the sinus node and then travels down to the AV node. Well, that causes the top chambers to contract, giving us the, the boom, and then electricity travels down to the bottom chambers, causing the bottom part of the heart to contract. So boom, 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 boom. Now, when we have these ectopic beats, we actually get signals arising from various different sources, and they can arise from the top chambers around here, for example, where you start getting extra heartbeats arising from there. And that can then cause the heart to actually 
have extra heartbeats and we can sense them. They might be more intense. We might notice them as our heart jumping or racing. And these are extra heartbeats. Now, most often these ectopic or extra heartbeats are benign and are not a cause for concern. They are very, very common, particularly in adults, and can arise from many underlying causes and reasons. Now, common causes of why our heart experiences these ectopic heartbeats are essentially anything that makes our heart beat faster. So when we're stressed, physical, emotional stress can cause it. When we're, got, when we're suffering from anxiety and worry, we can experience these. Anything that causes or stimulates our heart to beat, alcohol, caffeine, smoking, drugs, can also stimulate the heart, stimulate these extra ectopic beats and make us feel more of these symptoms. However, it is important to, do, to get them checked out because in a small percentage of patients, there are some underlying causes why these extra beats can arise. And they might be underlying congenital defects. You might have been born with a certain heart condition or there might be hormonal conditions and people with thyroid disorders can also have a lot of these palpitations and ectopic beats. And then there are structural issues with the heart valves, the heart muscle that need to be checked. But most often they are extra beats that occur haphazardly, sporadically, can be felt day and night. However, more likely to be sensed during the course of the night when we're resting in our body and mind as you just getting ready to sleep, and then we're starting to become more aware of these extra heartbeats. Once we sense these extra heartbeats, then of course we get a bit more worked up and worried and stressed. We may not be able to sleep properly, and that causes lethargy and causes tiredness during the course of the day. And then it becomes a vicious cycle. So the key thing in these ectopic heartbeats is to get some simple investigations done, have a chat with your doctor, they'll take a history, they'll examine you, do an ECG, they might do a 24-hour monitor of your heart, you might have an ultrasound to confirm that everything's structurally working normally, and then you'll probably have some blood tests just to give us some peace of mind about things like your electrolytes, magnesium, potassium, your kidney function, your thyroid function, and so forth. Now, the most common way to manage these is really for your doctor to do the preliminary assessments and to offer you reassurance to tell you that these are very common symptoms. They are experienced by many, many people. Most often, there's no underlying issue of concern. And peace of mind often is all it takes. Sometimes keeping yourself well hydrated, minimizing stimulants like alcohol, coffee, tea, relaxation techniques, avoiding the stresses of life, which can be very, very troublesome, not smoking, not consuming a lot of caffeinated products and, of course, drugs, keeping alcohol in moderation, and then simple things like medication can be useful in a select group of individuals. But again, important to discuss with your healthcare professional about any of these symptoms you might be experiencing. Most often, these ectopic beats are very, very common, very frequently arising from the top chambers of the heart or the bottom chambers of the heart can be felt as extra beats, missed beats, skipped beats, and a little bit of reassurance goes a long way. So hopefully you found that useful. Thanks again for all the support of the website, heartmatters.com. Feel free to go and subscribe to the newsletter. Until the next video, bye for now.